Here is the basic spacecraft model so far. Let's see if we can add a, uh, the remaining details to call this thing really done. The first thing I wanted to look at was the room itself. We have one room called the bridge. It's important that the lighting be configured properly in each room. Go to the part menu and bring up the room lighting settings. There's two critical settings. One is whether this room is lit by sunlight normally or not. That's excluding opening and closing doors. And the other is whether you'd like the lights on when the build, ship is built. Okay. We'd also like a few uh, status panels. There's, uh, there's a lot to choose from, but we don't really... there's a couple of them that are very handy. Let's move our grid to this back wall. This will be our place for our status panels. And I'm going to bring that grid out from the wall just a little bit so that uh, our panels aren't in the plane of the wall. Okay, let's start with the status panel. The alert status panel uh, shows red, yellow, or green based on the current uh, alert condition of the ship. And uh, it also acts as the audio speaker for the tone that is emitted when the alert status changes. So that's the speaker, that's the announcement uh, enunciator. Another handy uh, panel in the area of doors, uh, hull doors, is the room life support status. This panel shows uh, the air pressure in a given room. It's nice to have that panel uh, indicate at some point the uh, air pressure in the airlock. In our little ship here we don't really have an airlock, we just have one room. So we'll put it there on the wall and we're going to associate that with the bridge room because it does show the air pressure in a specific room. It has to be as associated with the room that it's going to report on. Okay, and now we see it's the Bridge 10 Room Life Support status. Okay, what other uh, status panels do we have? Uh, the world map. I like having the world map. It's just nice to have. This uh, shows the uh, uh, map of the world that you're currently at or in orbit around. It was such an easy thing to add because it takes advantage of uh, it reuses a texture that's immediately and readily available anyway. It was just, uh, it would have been a shame to not throw it on the wall. And let's put our map up there. Uh, station panels. World map. World maps have a, a two to one aspect ratio, unless it's a ring world and then the, the aspect ratio is much wider and narrower than that. Uh, oh, some indication of size here would have been handy. Let's move the uh, grid there. There we go. Back. Just do this over C. Restart. There we go. Now I can not see the coordinates. Good enough. There's our world map. And uh, let's see what other uh, panels might be nice to have. This uh, service panels allow access to systems of the ship for the purpose of uh, servicing them. Let's go put our service panels on this wall over here. I'm going to move my grid over to this wall. I'm not snapping anything. And I'd like to once again bring it out from the wall just a little. Okay. So let's not get fancy. We'll just put some service panels up here so we can get access to our capacitor to repair it. At a service panel, you can uh, repair a system by uh, repairing broken parts. You can remove parts and you can uh, install module upgrades. This ship has an FTL drive. We might as well have a service panel for it. My snapping is giving me trouble. Let's uh, 
life support service panel doesn't hurt and in any system we have we might as well have a service panel for it maneuver drive service panel power plant service panel sensor service panel and I think that's it for panels because we don't have shields or weapons uh, and this weapon service panel isn't for servicing the gun turret this is for a, a larger scale weapon system that we didn't build into this ship uh, we don't have any ground vehicles we've got enough berths let's take care of our contrail emitters we never placed any of those so what we're gonna find is that uh, our contrail emitter this is the uh, the ship as it will appear in the game and uh, if you don't put any contrail emitters at all on there's gonna be one in the center of the back so I'm gonna turn that back off and let's go put them where we want them I'm gonna snap my grid to the center of one of these motors and flatten it out. Oops, wrong button. Flatten. There we go. And how about one meter spacing? Go to part, details, contrail emitter. Uh, you can have really about as many contrail emitters as you want. There, there might be performance issues when you start having lots, like hundreds. Now, uh, one unobvious uh, feature of contrail emitters is that the size of the em the trail that's emitted is based on the size of this icon. So if I want my contrail emitters to be bigger than that, I need to stretch them bigger. I think I'll do that with this one. I'm going to put my grid, I don't want to snap, I want my grid right in the middle of there, and I'm going to select it, use Shift S to scale, and I'm going to scale it out. Uh, I'm going to be consistent about this. Oop. Control S is not the key. Shift S. I'll go with that. In fact, I'll just copy that contrail emitter over here. I recall from earlier these were 8 meters apart, so it looks like 8 meters on positive X is 8. Control Enter. There we go. Two contrail emitters of identical size. Oops. Now let's take a look at our, our spacecraft. That's more like where we want our, our contrails to come out of. Okay. We've taken care of interior lighting, service panels, contrails. Let's see what else we have. Uh, how about some decals? Let's get our flag and things on our ship. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put them on this top flat surface. Let's uh, move our grid up to here. Once again, we're not gonna get too fancy. Just to show you, show you how this is done. Uh, part oops, decals. Now, decals uh, are distinctive from the texture that has the the word decal in it. These objects are particularly uh, rendered in a special way so that they are allowed to be coplanar oops, uh, with other surfaces. We'll see that. I'm going to draw this flag exactly, I'm going to turn off snapping, I'm going to turn this, draw this flag exactly on the surface of the, uh, of the ship. Now in the old days of plastic airplane models, uh, decals were one of the last things you would apply. You'd, you'd melt them off a sheet with hot water and uh, quickly slide them onto the surface and uh, have all sorts of trouble when they wrinkled and uh, tore. Uh, but uh, these don't do that. Okay, there's a decal of a flag. Notice no shimmering or surface collisions uh, due to its uh, uh, coplanar uh, position with the surface. The flag decal should be placed square. Uh, it's the uh, the uh, object itself expects that. Uh, 
people's flags come in different aspect ratios and uh, at runtime the flag will be uh, scaled to fit inside this box however the aspect ratio allows it and it will expose underlying surfaces underneath here so there should be a good surface underneath that particular decal and it should be drawn square so let's uh, let's add a couple more decals how about the uh, the Empire's name I'm just gonna put a box here we're drawing in the plane of the grid at this moment and I'm not snapping to anything okay so there's the Empire's name alright so we've got our flag and our Empire name how about uh, and the name will be scaled appropriately to fit into this box I don't think it'll run off the end I think it might the text might get smaller or smash or something to make it fit but, okay let's put another decal on here uh, the ship's name a lot of ships have their own name on them and this one will have it too now in the uh, in the world of uh, aircraft sometimes the pilot's name is also uh, stenciled on the on the uh, craft and so we've kind of allowed for that here with the decal of the captain's name and this captain let's say is a little modest his name is small down here there we go and uh, there we go those are some decals and you can make decals with any texture and uh, they can be stencily type textures like this where there's empty space around them and they'll be applied like this uh, I think there's a make decal option if you just make a face and make a decal out of it uh, you can do that okay what other details do we have let's put a game table in our ship just because we wouldn't want to be in deep space without one Maybe someday there'll be more fun games to play. Let's put our grid down here. I'm going to snap to that. Okay, here's my game table. I can use arrow keys to rotate this thing. I'm going to leave it straight on, though. I don't really want to put it where my... where my troop stands. Where was that? Troop gunner position. There it is. I'll just put it up kind of in like here. Okay. Now it appears as a model in the game. It won't be a, a, a surface colliding decal like that, so we don't really have to worry about lifting it off the floor. Let's take a look at that. There it is when the ship is actually in existence. And uh, let's go back off with that. And what other details can we take care of here before we call this thing done? Uh, a headlight bulb. We are going to wish we had that. When you turn your lights on in your ship, the light is emitted from somewhere. Your ship, a ship, only gets to have one headlight bulb. This bulb is where the actual light is emitted. It, the bulb itself is not visible. Uh, you can create whatever geometry of a visible light structure you want, but uh, the actual emission of light is a precious thing, and uh, each spacecraft only gets the the uh, luxury of emitting light from one spot. We're going to add that detail of our headlight bulb. I'm going to put it right there. Actually, I don't want it right there. I want it down a little bit. In fact, first I'm going to I'm going to actually make that geometry of a light of a headlight first. I'm going to put a headlight down underneath here, and let's make that using a uh, a little bit of hull. And we'll make a little a little sphere right there. Point two, that's fine, and six sides, that'll work. Okay. Now the headlight, the light emitted from the bulb is not going to be affected by the geometry of this light at all. Okay, I want to move this down just a little. it's just for looks okay so I think I want my headlight bulb in the center of that so let's go up here uh, and I'm gonna move my grid down here there we go uh, 
details headlight bulb if I try to add a second headlight bulb it'll really just move the first one so you know don't try to trick it or anything okay so there's my bulb position so I'm snapping to something undesirable there we go and it wants to know the direction uh, that the headlight aims or it, it can be an omnidirectional light and um, uh, an omnidirectional light just has uniform lighting in all directions. I'm going to have it point forward, which is, uh, in this case, along the y-axis, but I want it to point slightly downward. So I'm going to go a comma one forward by comma minus point oh one down. Okay. Now what this thing creates in the drawing is this big giant icon that gives you a sense of the uh, pattern of light that's going to be emitted from this light bulb. Let's make this grid go, become less of a problem. There we go. The headlight bulb on a spaceship is pretty bright, otherwise you it's just not useful if you can't see things at a, at a safe distance. Okay, there's our headlight. Now usually I make the headlight bulb, uh, wherever it is, headlight bulb. I usually make it invisible because I don't want to see that. Uh, it'll, it's, it'll be incorporated into the drawing just fine if it's invisible. So there's our headlight bulb right there. Now this object, I'm going to split it in two. I'm going to go into face mode. Isolate this. Look at only the faces. Oops. Ah. Right there. And I really want to just pick the front half of it. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the front half of it into my headlight lens. But I need to split this part into two parts. So I'm going to, I've got those faces selected, and let's oh, we're in face mode. Let's split them. So now the ones that were selected got pulled apart into, an, uh, into a separate new part. And there it is. It's also a hull. And I'm going to go up to the part window and say make headlight lens. Okay, now that half is my headlight lens. If I wanted it to look more headlight lensy, uh, I'd have to like do some things to it. I could give it a white color or texture it appropriately, but it's not needed for the light itself to function. And now when the light is on, those polygons will show up uh, bright white as if they're lit by the light itself. And uh, so there's my headlight. Okay, what other details do we have? That took care of our headlight, game tables, we've taken care of our paths. Uh, there's a couple of other uh, lights that are nice to have on, on aircraft anyway, we'll put them on our spacecraft. And those are nav lights. Nav lights are the, the red and green lights you see at the ends of the wings of uh, aircraft. and. Uh, they can actually be all sorts of things, little white lights and just anything that helps the, the craft be more visible. I'm uh, orienting my grid to the side of this. I'm going to go YZ so I can draw straight up that way. I'm going to get in here and I'm going to draw a little nav light on the side. I want my grid to be a little more fine than that. There we go. Uh, there again, I can make this out of hull. I I'm just going to make a little box. Oops. That was point one. There's another point one. Done. And I'll make it stick out point one. Okay. There's my nav light. I don't have to get too crazy with it. And, uh, or it's going to be. We're going to turn that into a nav light. Let's, uh, say design or part. Make nav light. And uh, on aircraft, green is on the right side, or the starboard side, and red is on the port side, or the left side. And we have to be on green, so we're going to take green. Now I'm going to set my grid back to the center, and I know, that, oops, let's go totally flat to the center. And let's take this guy and make a symmetrical copy of it across the y-axis along the x-axis, or the copy is along the, the axis. There we go. So now we've got another one over here somewhere. There it is, on the left side. But actually we want the color to be different. And uh, 
I guess I'll just use this command again. There might be a different way to do this, but we're going to make this one red. There's red. Okay. There's our nav lights. Now, uh, how about a strobe light and a rotating beacon? These two kinds of lights are considered part of the anti-collision system of a spacecraft or an aircraft. You, you have a lot of latitude to put these wherever you want. I'm going to make a, uh, a hull sphere and I'm just going to put it right there because I like that spot. It looks... Okay, and I'll make it... that's fine pick a size. Okay, and this is going to be, uh, put our rotating beacon on top. We wouldn't want our turret guy to turn around and get blinded by a strobe light. So let's, uh, uh, say part, make rotating beacon. Now, when you make a rotating beacon, the orientation of the grid matters at the time you say to make the rotating beacon lens. And what it does is the z-axis determines the axis around which the beacon rotates. So if I was putting a, a beacon on the side of something, I might want it to rotate uh, accordingly. Okay, so let's put uh, one last light on the bottom. Let's put a strobe down here. Okay, strobe light. Let's move our grid down here. Let's draw a, uh, a little bit of hull. It could be anything. You could make a crazy spindle, but I don't want to do that. Let's just make a, a sphere. There it is. Ah. You know, you hate to be making a video and have a spider crawl up your hand. Okay, here we go. All right. Let's make that part into a... Uh, strobe. Okay, it's a strobe. The four kinds of lights, strobes, beacons, nav lights, and headlight, are each uh, controlled separately on the helm of the spacecraft. Okay, what other things do we have to do to this ship? Anything else we could make? Landing gear? Uh, not too much work there. It's like a door. It just has two states. If you make it, you can re uh, retract it. If you don't, you don't have to. We made our lights, and uh, we didn't do anything. We didn't make any new windows. We did make our original window. So I think we're going to call this ship and this uh, tutorial really done. Uh, that's a very thoroughly complete spacecraft uh, of small uh, scale. So that's it.